Can you read it for me, sir? Romans 11, 29. Mm -hmm. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Can we all read that together? One, two, three. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. One more time. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. One more time. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Now, I want you to understand uh, uh, something extremely powerful. This is something that a lot of believers have a misconception about, about this verse. Because this is speaking about people who are elect, set apart. Amen. Now, according to God's divine will, according to the Lord's divine purpose, according to the Lord's divine mind, you and me were not supposed to make it through talent. You have to understand that there is a difference between talent, gifts, and callings. Your talent is your physical ability or your physical attribute based on your genetic pool. Who you came from. Which is still given to you by God, but that is the physical aspect of your life. Some people are tall naturally you have already made the nba just because you are seven feet mm. are you listening to me yes. that doesn't mean you're a good player but you already have the attributes that will benefit you if you go that way That's good this is your 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 physical attributes which are also a gift but more so your life is based on talent there are people who are much more athletic than others. Some people are faster than others. Some people are stronger than others. Even though these things are good and they are, they are channels of the expression of God from your spirit into your soul and into your physical body, they are not the key that makes you a remnant to God. They can be used by God, but they don't guarantee success in life. Wow. I wish somebody could hear me. Now, when we look at the gift, the gift of God, this is not speaking merely when people hear about gift, they immediately think about the nine gifts of the spirit. Actually, there are more than nine. I don't know who came up with the nine gifts of the spirit. If you read scripture, there's actually way more than nine. Amen. But the gifts of God are not merely prophecy, healing, casting out of devils. No, that is not what the gift is. Because there have been gifted people on earth before the Holy Spirit descended on people. The gift is what God bestowed on you before you entered the earth are you listening to me the gift is what god bestowed on you that makes you separate set apart from people who are simply talented so somebody can be an actor without the gift of god the gift of God is that it factor that when people see you, other actors may say you are not that good, but everybody else looks at you and say, wow, I will see. this person has got it. You may just do your Denzel walk and you get every role simply because of a walk and there are so many people who have a walk. The gift of God is what God bestowed on you, not because you prayed, simply because he foreknew you and he said, I am going to put something in you that is going to make you extra successful for my glory. I think I'm preaching to the wrong people. You see, the problem with people who are not spiritual is you chase trends. 
you jump onto businesses that are working only for the hour. So good. But everyone that has made a difference in the world, imagine some of you are better speakers than Oprah. She's not even anointed like you. But she discovered what God bestowed on her. So if she sits down and says, so how do you feel? Millions, billions. You get a car, you get a car. You... Simply because of something God bestowed. You see, your issue, you are thinking only about manifestation of the divine God. Which is when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you start shandaradada. The Bible doesn't say shandaradada ba, 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 will pay your bills. <laughs> the Bible doesn't say shandaradada will get you a job. The Bible doesn't say because you shandaradada ba, 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 sa, ta, 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 ta. you get in and get the role or get the part. No. That is why the Bible says God causes the sun and the rain to fall on everybody. God cannot be fair if he's only gifted you and not the others. What God has reserved is for his elect because you have a part of God. Now we are talking about the Holy Ghost. Imagine God said this about Nebuchadnezzar. To the children of Israel, he said, you guys are not listening to me. I am raising a man that you will become so powerful and conquer the world and he will conquer you and put you into slavery. I have made him like that. So this man had the ability to win wars. Not because he was shanda da 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 There was a gift bestowed on him. David was killing lions and bears before anointing ever came on his head. He was already gifted to be a warrior. If you look at his family, David's family, his brothers were soldiers. So in his side is genes. Their family was already chosen as defenders of Israel. So when the anointing came, was to make him king so that the gift that was bestowed on him teaching too good let me find somebody else let me find somebody else some of you are bitter i'm sorry to say this frustrated constipated in your heart <laughs> Very deep, very deep. I almost fell because that one was too deep. <laughs> Some of you are constipated in your heart. You can't breathe because other people are succeeding. Then you're asking yourself, you see, this is the issue with believers. They will see you succeed immediately. Their attribute is to Satan. That one sold his soul. This one sold. Okay, if people are selling, how do you know? Are you a Satanist? Are you the broker or are you the deal maker? How do you know who sold their soul and who didn't? Uh, is somebody getting what I'm saying? You see somebody successful in entertainment, you give the devil the credit. Get this gift that every human... Doesn't the Bible say every good and perfect gift? When did Satan ever make anybody gifted? Are you listening to what I'm saying? Now, somebody can pervert their gift. Somebody can go and look for a, 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 a magic and sorcery for their gift. But it is foolishness because what they were given was meant to work anyway. No one has, the devil has never made anyone great. Everyone that Satan ever takes advantage of are already people that are already selected by God. They just don't know. too good is somebody listening to me stop giving satan credit that he doesn't deserve so hear me well for each and every one of you Amen. there is a gift bestowed on you 
some of you have the gift of faith. You just know that whatever, you just know this is the way you should go. Some of you have the gift of wisdom. You just know how to navigate situations. You know how to problem solve. Some of you have, have, have a gift that just make whatever you touch just shines. None of this is because Father make me, no, it is just inside of you. But the issue is this now. The gift, what God has bestowed on you, cannot work if you are outside the assignment. So good. It cannot be seen if you are outside of the assignment. The word calling there actually is not unto ministry. I don't know why people think this is talking about ministry. Israel did not, all Israelites are not ministers. If anything, a very small percentage. But the word calling is invitation. That's what it actually means. Invitation. It is not talking about being sent. To be called and to be sent are two different things. A calling is an invitation. Touch your neighbor say, a calling is an invitation. A calling is an invitation. I can't hear you. A calling, a calling is an invitation. A calling is simply an invitation. Some of you have forsaken your invitation because the devil has distracted you to not believe it will work because somebody who had the same talent did not succeed. So you shunned your invitation not knowing that you are gifted, mm. not talented. Mm. I, I am talking to the wrong people. Some people are talented, not gifted. Uh, there's a boxer that I love. Anybody that knows me personally, I love combat sports. The reason why I love combat sports is because there is no hiding behind a team. If you didn't take your training seriously, it will show. If you took your training seriously, but you get distracted often, you get distracted for a second, it could be the end. So it requires you to be alert and present every second. You cannot for a second not be present. Is this making sense? There is a fighter I love so much. His name is Floyd Mayweather. Floyd always says, no, listen to me. He says something that always surprised me. How did this man become aware of this? He says this. He says, everybody is talented. I am God gifted. If you watch his interviews, he always says that. He says, everybody, yes, I work hard. Everybody works hard. But the difference between me and them is I am God gifted. And if you watch him fight, you realize that there is something supernatural with this guy. He will see you trying to hit him before you hit him and he will hit you before you even think of. It is so weird. His reflex, his timing is not normal. If you know anything about fighting, you know that this guy is... is He's special and he never loses because he knows that. Now you imagine if somebody who is not Shandala Baba Baba like you has discovered that he's gifted, Woo! not talented. Yes. How much more for you who has the Holy Ghost? Come yeah. on. How much more for you who has seen Jesus, who has seen the power of God? Ah, I want you to sit for two seconds. We are going somewhere. So, so you need to understand this by the spirit. A calling is an invitation. So if you don't recognize your place of invitation, you will never know what God bestowed upon you. If you don't understand the place of your invitation... You will never know how great God has made you. If you don't accept your invitation, you will not understand how expanded your territories are. 
if you don't accept the invitation you will not see those men that God said men will come from everywhere and give unto your bosom if you don't accept I, I feel like I'm talking to myself right, teaching good prophet if you don't accept your invitation you will simply become a normal person yet you are there is nothing about you that should ever be something called normal are, are you listening to me jesus was walking he saw andrew he said andrew follow me the moment andrew accepted the calling what was bestowed in him wow. Wow. the moment peter accepted the calling yeah. He was no longer natural, he became supernatural. Yes. Whoever received the calling. Woo. Come on. Let me show you how deep this goes. Jesus tells the apostles, follow me, follow me. Everybody follows him. They follow him, they start hanging out. Jesus said, okay, let me show you what is inside of you. He said, go two, two by two. Go two by two. Go and start praying for people. When they went two by two, they realized that demons were obeying them. They realized that they could do miracles. They did not have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Let me find people that can hear what I'm trying to say. The Holy Ghost had not come upon them, but demons were already afraid of them. The Holy Ghost had not come upon them. Miracles were already happening. What is delaying you is not the Holy Spirit that you already have. Is you don't know the place of your invitation. Wow. wow. Help us, prophet. So good. You see, some people are clapping. Those who are not clapping, it is okay. We will take all the blessing. Those who continue to clap, get your blessing. Because Amen. you're waking up to the truth. Some are still sleeping. Amen. Are you, are you listening to me? Your destiny is not taken from you because you have not awakened. Because your calling will always be available. As long as you have breath in you, there is no expiration date. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I prophesy to somebody. Yes. yes. Your destiny is not gone. Have a seat. Your future is not lost. Yes. Your manifestation is still at hand. Yes. Somebody shout fire. 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 Uh, sit for two seconds. We are going somewhere. Amen. When you know your invitation... People looked at Daddy Abraham. He knew that God had blessed him. He knew that God told him to leave his father and mother's house. God was expanding him. Then God came to him and said, Abraham, I wish you knew why I took you from your father's house. You are about to be a nation. Abraham looked at himself. He said, Lord, you might be mistaken. You have not even given me a son. Eliezer, my servant, is about to inherit everything. I am grooming him like my son. God said, no, 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 no. Your gun will not shoot blanks. I have loaded you with somebody. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Somebody is not listening to me. Abraham looked at God. He said, God, are you sure? God said, listen. I am telling you. Yes. There is one bullet in your gun. Yes. I am loading you, but there is one. That is becoming a nation. 
Abraham visited the wrong invitation. He still produced results. But it was not the result approved by God because it was in the wrong place. Just because your job pays your bills doesn't mean that's where you're supposed to be. So good. Come on. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Just because your investment gave you a return doesn't mean that is the best that God has for you. No. There is something inside of you. Yes. That is waiting for you to awaken to the invitation. Yes. That the moment that time comes, Sit for two seconds. We are going somewhere. Sit for two seconds. Somebody say no expiration date. No expiration date. Look at your neighbor say no expiration date. No expiration date. Now, now hear me. I have 16 minutes to do this thing and, and be finished. The right seed... In the wrong fertile ground is still wrong. One of the things that has distracted a lot of believers, I am sorry this is foolishness. Please forgive me if you don't like it. It is okay. I'm glad it is hurting you. It is bruising you. Tough love. Amen. I actually pray it cuts you apart. That you may be delivered. Amen. You see, many of you are not going anywhere because you like good sentiments. People to tell you sweet things that don't help you. I'm going to tell you the truth. Amen. Are you listening to me? Many of you have aborted where God wants you to be because it did not feel right. I have something to do, but this place I am in, I have no peace about it. Did Jesus have peace about the cross? I don't know. You see, I don't know. Some of these things I pray sometimes that I just know God cannot make me salvation manager. Because some people need smacking. Who started this? Which scripture did you see that said that? If you have no peace about it, it means God is not in it. Jesus needed comfort to go to the cross. He even prayed, he said, Daddy, if it is your will, ah, let this thing pass. But let not my will, your will. The next verse you just see that angels came from heaven to comfort him. Do you know what the angels did? They did not take the fear. They did not take the anxiety. Do you know what comfort is? It will be okay. It won't last as long as you think. You will get through it. You already know what is on the other side. It won't last as long as you think. You will get through it. You already know what is on the other side. Persevere. Be strong and courageous. Amen. You got this, Jesus. And Jesus got up. He went to see them. He said, it is me you're looking for. He was willing to be arrested. He was willing to be beaten. He had seen the other side. This did not happen because he had peace. You are looking for sentiments that are from the pit of hell. Many of you have rejected your invitation. Somebody wanted to marry you. They came. You undermined them. Say, ah, he doesn't drive the nicest car. He's still struggling, so. You go find somebody else that was doing better, that will beat you, mistreat you. A few years later, the one you undermined is on high demand now. You need to have foresight. 
Touch your neighbor, say you need foresight. You need foresight. In order for you to enter, listen to me, children of God. You need to understand where your invitation is. Amen. What is delaying you is not Satan. Satan is just playing with you not knowing where you're supposed to be. Think about it. How can the world... Did, did uh, uh, Warren Buffett ever fast and pray to prosper? No. You, you are busy in church. Father, Rakapa. Power to make wealth. Huh? The Bible did not say, I will give you. It said, it is he that gives power. Everybody that has made wealth, that innovated something that changed the world. Listen to me. You create something that will help thousands, you make thousands. You create something that will help hundreds of thousands, you make hundreds of thousands. You create something that will help millions, you make millions. You create something that will bless billions, you make what? Billions. It is that simple. It is actually that simple. You think about it by the Spirit. Warren Buffett never fasted and prayed. Wealthy. Didn't need to steal from anybody. He was just intelligent. He just saw people selling Coca-Colas when he was young. He said, this thing, 10 years from now, 50 years, I'm going to jump into it. He knew where he belonged. That was it. If the world can have enough discernment, you who has the Holy Spirit, your attention is in the wrong place. Don't be too heavenly minded that you have no earthly good. Come on. I feel like I stabbed somebody with. Listen to me. You are going to heaven anyway. Let me show you how deep this is. Sit down for two seconds. I have 10 minutes. <laughs> listen, listen to me carefully. Anyone that has confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Believes that his God in the flesh was born of a virgin, died on the cross. On the third day he rose again. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. Even if he doesn't have the depth of your revelation, you will all meet in heaven. So it is not a trophy for you to make heaven if you are Christian. That's obvious. But to do exploits on earth for God... Yeah. That when you enter heaven, people are excited about you. Yes. They said, this one built homes for the widows. Yes. This one helped the needy. This one did this. This one manifested his calling. We need to ask him, how was it? How was that experience to serve our God on earth like that? That is the crown. That is what matters. Among millionaires, they are broke millionaires. If you have two million and the other one has a hundred million, to them you are broke. So if you have eternal life, I have eternal life. We are the same. But if I am welcome and celebrated in heaven, then I am separate from you. I want recognition in heaven. You may not. I want. Amen. I want heaven to have a memorial concerning me. Yeah. Amen. They will say, in this man's life, uh, that people will be exiting earth, coming to heaven. They say, we need to find Prophet Lovi. Is he here? Ah, we had stories. Your stories saved me. You prophesied to my mother when I was still in the womb. And even, Amen. that is what, you see, but on earth, on earth, ah, uh, you need to know where you belong. Amen. The gifts and calling, what God has bestowed on you, he can't take away. Amen. Realize what God said. Sit for two seconds. Listen to what the Bible says. Your gift shall make room for you. Not your talent. Not your hobby. Not what you enjoy what God bestowed on you. Your gift will make room for you. You know, when you have the same thing that somebody else has, 
and they are messing up. Actually, I've seen this in the music business because that's where I came from, entertainment business, whereby actors who know actors, they're like, man, this guy's just shining right now. He's not even that good. But people are going crazy. You knowing what acting is, you're like, this Shadrach, Meshach, and Abed Negro. Wait, and wait until my moment comes. But you understand that they can't see what you're seeing. But many of you interpret that to be, it is the agents they have, the managers they have, the people they met. No, 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 no. So good. That should make you see, I am more talented. Where is what God bestowed in me? Where is that grace that God bestowed on me? Because what God bestowed highlights you and what is in you. You see, the invitation will bring you to the location. But what will make room for you is the gift. It is the gift that establishes you, keeps you there, and makes people to know that you have arrived. Let me give you an example with ministry. A lot of people think, especially men of God, I've seen this uncountable times. They will come to me and say, prophet, wow. Can you teach me how to do this prophetic thing? I'm like, why? I just know that he helps a lot of people and that's why people come. I looked at him, I said, listen, I know prophets who can tell you what happened in 1720. No one will ever know about them. Yeah. Prophecy doesn't build a church. Yeah. Discover the message God gave you. Yeah. If you don't know, there is no servant of God without a message. So good. Every man of God that was ever sent on earth yeah. was given a... How can you work for a boss who never assigned an assignment for you? What are you preaching? From the day the Lord Jesus appeared for, to me since I was six, he told me exactly what I am sent to do. I know exactly to the detail what I need to preach, in what lane I need to preach, how I need to build people in order to become what he showed me to be which he called a people of fire, not people on fire. And he showed me how to do it. So every time I'm teaching, the reason why you love what I am teaching you, not only because you are invited to me by the Holy Spirit, but it is also you are built up. That sometimes when you hear some people teaching, you're like, ah, we passed this level. You feel like you can begin to teach them. Your prayer is deeper. You can cast out devils. Yes. You find yourself manifesting the prophetic. You are like... It is because I am doing my job. I'm not just here preaching and God... <laughs> he shall do it for you. <laughs> Believe it. That's a good thing. That is not my calling. Once in a while, I'll be a Baptist preacher. <laughs> I'm coming out. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. But some of these people that you love that are so popular, you love to listen to. They just give you wisdom of the mind, no transformation of the spirit. Because every word of God is beneficial. But is it necessarily going to rise you to where God wants you to be? Nah. Because every message you will teach, there is grace attached to it. Do you have the grace to take somebody there? I was talking to my, my son, Will, yesterday. It was you and JT that were with me, right? Yes. In the In upstairs. I don't know who else it was. I don't know if it was yesterday. Maybe the day before yesterday. The day before yesterday. They came and met me here and I was discussing some things with them. And we were talking about spiritual things. And I was giving them in-depth things that I can't even teach in church. And they were holding their head their whole time. They're like, what is going on? 
Then my son asked me a question, Pops, this is what is going on. One thing I love about this guy's wife, Pops, this is what is going on. So the, I said, ah, okay, tell them to push for this. But if they push for this, if this comes, it's okay because we are thinking long term. But push for this. But they had tried, they had resisted before. After we ate whatever, the next day calls me, oh, by the way, they accepted whatever we told them. Notice, he understands where he can get grace. Mm. Amen. Amen. Because grace can be transferred. Amen. You are listening to this message because there is grace I am imparting to you. Yeah, I receive, receive it. By the Spirit of God. I have two minutes. Let me finish this. Sit for two minutes. I want to show you something. I want to show you something. So listen to me. Listen to me clearly. Don't allow bills to distract you. Don't allow frustration to distract you. Don't allow people's words to frustrate you. Don't allow temporary hardships to stop you. To stop you from touching what God has ordained for you. Every time God has given you something, challenges will rise against that something. The devil does not fight you. He fights what God has bestowed on you. The devil comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. What is he trying to steal? Some of you look at yourself, you say, but I have nothing. But everything keeps going wrong. Why is the devil so interested in you? He's trying to distract you. So that you don't see what he's stealing from you. But what the devil is stealing is not the gift. It's time. Wow. The good news is as long as you have breath in your lungs. Yes. There Amen. is no expiration date. Amen. For what God has given you. Yes. Abraham was an old man, incapable of doing what he needed to do. His wife was an old woman who even laughed at God when God said, this is what you will produce. She laughed, but she did not know the laugh she laughed was the prophetic that was revealing that the child's name will be laughter. You are dreaming of millions because that is your portion. I receive. You are dreaming of acceleration because that is. I receive. Whatever you are thinking you cannot achieve, that's what you have. Yes. Yes. No, you didn't hear what I told you. Abraham said, yes, Lord, his wife. God said, why are you laughing? Notice, God asked her, why are you laughing? She said, no, 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 I am not laughing. God was not mad that she laughed. God was surprised that she knew the name. Wow. Did she? Some of you didn't get it. God said, no, you did laugh. She said, no, I didn't. Then God went on to say, by this time next year, God started giving dates because he was shocked. Why did you laugh? Some people read that thinking God is offended. No, 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 no. God wasn't offended. God was shocked. God was surprised. Remember, the high priests were ready to kill Jesus. So they are debating, how should we kill him? How should we do this? How should we do that? The high priest got angry at them. 
say what is wrong with you people arguing like this don't you know it is good for one man to die for the sake of the nation the bible says he prophesied not knowing the man was full of hate for jesus but what he said was not him it was the prophetic spirit the lord spoke through him that israel will be saved because of the death of jesus how are people seeing their destiny your haters hate you because they have seen where you're going come on your enemies hate you because they know where you're going they are talking about you because they have already seen you on top you are topic in their mouth because you're already on top if you didn't have anything going on no one will be talking imagine somebody trying to kill jesus he's actually prophesying why they should kill him because they were divided some said no we can't kill him it will be bad others said no we should maybe just kill him in secret then he said no why are you guys arguing like this don't you know it's good for one man to die instead of the whole nation we need to accuse him publicly crucify him with thieves embarrass him so the high priest led the charge not knowing that whoever offers the offering of the year it is only the high priest that is permitted to offer a sacrifice that will cover the whole nation him being high priest that year he was prophesying his destiny to be the one that will present the son of god unto god himself Come on. so good he discovered his place do you know that that man when we see him in heaven because he's in heaven do you guys know that he was a man of god i don't know why daddy this confuses me people think the pharisees were unbelievers no they were not nothing about them they just did not have the revelation of jesus because it was not given to them they were supposed to kill him so that we can be saved if they did not kill him then there is no salvation so it was their destiny to kill him wow. do you understand this to the believers at that time they cried they say how could jesus be killed what a mighty prophet amongst us but jesus was telling his disciples all the time listen i'm gonna get killed i will rise again even the angels were surprised when they were coming to the graveyard crying say, did he not tell you people did he not tell you don't you remember what he told you when you're over there right now as you are speaking you're in the wrong location he's already meeting you mm. on the other side of town mm. notice it is because of the women that the apostles are woke to understand their place So when things have gone bad, what you are lacking is your prophecy. I'm still waiting for Bishop Mike. Are, are you listening to me? You have been knowing where you're supposed to be. The problem is you want to be where others are. In my personal life, even when I was in the music business, nothing I touched failed. I always was success. God just gave me grace. Whatever I touch works. But that almost stopped me from my destiny. Yeah. I don't think I'm the most talented person in that area. There are many people, the T's and, and the Peeps and, you know, and, and the Mike Dupree is one of the most talented human beings I know. Ah, but everything I did was just going. It didn't matter. 
And then God came and told me, all right, that's enough. Now let's go this way. So when I was giving all that up to do what God wanted me to do, specifically, my managers, the publishing company were angry at me. They were like, you're not finishing projects. You're not. I said, guys, I really have to do this. They were mad at me because they were waiting for me to dry up and come back and be serious. Here I am in the presence of men of God that are telling me, this ministry thing is very hard. Come on, teach God. Do you know how hard it is to serve God? I lost my house. To get the church and people did not even help to maintain it now. I mean, ministry is, uh, they will break your heart. They will betray you. Listen, go back to what you're, you're already doing well. I said, but God told me. Another one came with a solution. Listen to me. I have a big church. Just make a branch and you'll be under the umbrella and then it will fly. I said, that's not what God told me. The Lord told me, you will build my house. It will be called Revelation Church of Jesus Christ. That is what I want. I started doing the work that God asked me to do. Two people, four people, 10 people, 20 people. 50 people, 60, 70, 100, ah, nowhere to keep people. Now I'm shocked because I have no Facebook, I have no Instagram, I'm not advertising anything. It just became word on the street, we are going to love his. Yep. Those who know, they know. Amen. You know, we have some OGs that are in here. That's what word became on the street. People are casting out devils. People are getting in. People prophecies crazy. We have, we are going to love this. Okay. Some men of God came. Hey, Amen. Let's work together. God told me I didn't tell you to partner with anybody. I said no, bro. I can't do it because this is not what God has told me to do. At least for this moment. You know, I always didn't like that guy. There is something weird about him. Some African witchcraft. <laughs> the same people that I went to and I told them, listen, let me use your church to do a midweek service so that on Sunday, you know, I never wanted to gather people for me. God told me you will gather my people. I did not want that. I actually wanted to be in a church that I will bring those people and let the pastor continue. Midweek, I do it, and the, the, serve, the main thing will be carried by the men of God. All of them rejected. They said they didn't see it. When it increased, they said, ah, in fact, he used to be in my church. I taught him. You just humble yourself. Mm. Then now he became, ah, you know, you should come and do some things with us. Uh, God said no. I said, man of God, we will see how God says it. That means a no from me. <laughs> Haven't you ever asked yourself, do you know how many invitations to preach I get? I don't do them. I don't do them not because I don't want to save souls. I don't want to go where God didn't send me. Amen. Amen. Doesn't matter to me. The Lord said, Go to Dallas. Amen. Two weeks before God said, Go to Dallas, I told the team, God said, We're going to Dallas. They said, Huh? <laughs> they tried to put everything together. Within two weeks, we were there. Packed out a, 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 a Winspear Opera House. People that came now, men of God, started, hey, man of God, you have a strong marketing team. <laughs> I said, what marketing team? <laughs> Did you use other churches? No, I didn't. I don't know what you're talking about. Listen to me. 
the recipe to this thing is very simple. I am not a product of my prayer. I am a product of God's grace. Amen. Amen. I am not a product of holiness. I am a product of the holiness bestowed on me by God. Amen. I am not righteous. Jesus is the only righteous one. And his righteousness is my portion. I have not worked for this. Not as if I, if I ever say, I work so hard. You will never hear me say that ever. Uh, do I have a strong work ethic? Absolutely. But I will never credit my work for the souls that God is touching. It will be demonic. Sometimes it's funny to me when I sit and, and people who used to come to the house sit down and want to learn from me that I, you see the problem of having these prophetic eyes is you can see people where they will be. Just yes. 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 keep coming. I remember my son Will came to me the, f the first day he came. He stood there, he, he, he pulled me to the kitchen and said, You know, he was convicted, but he didn't know how to express his words. I didn't even preach against him you know, or anything. Something just woke up in him. This is what, eight, nine years ago? He's standing there, he's like, I used to do this, I used to do this, I am stopping. I'm like, uh-uh, tell Jesus, not me. In my heart, he's just telling, I this and this and this, I'm completely stopping. I, I, you know, I'm... He said, what must I do? I said, it's simple, just keep coming. He said, what? He thought I would tell him, fast 10 years. <laughs> I told him, no, keep coming. You will see what God will do. Amen. The others also came. Ah, I will never do this. <laughs> I looked at them. I just laughed. I said, you, you'll be the first one that will mess me up. In my heart, I already know, but I'll say, ah, it's okay. Keep coming. So my attention was always given to those who I know. Some of the ones that were in the same house, staying until 3 a.m. so that they can ask me, because those days I was very accessible. Nowadays it's difficult because I have so much that I'm doing. I still love to meet and sit with people and teach people all the time. There is no time you sit with me that I won't tell you things. But I am, I, I am accessible. In the, they will ask me questions. And when I see their intention is in the wrong place, I'll just tell them, you know, some things it's in time and in, and in God's time and in grace. The same people now, ah, God revealed to me what he has is not from him. But you know why they are saying that? Is because they undermined what was in me. Now I am doing things they did not know that I could even go do. They are undermining you, but after tonight, Amen. The grace that God has released on you yeah. and you and you and you receive it is about to take you into places Amen. that you never knew. I want you to sincerely pray. I want you to sincerely pray. And you're going to tell the Lord, Father, open my eyes to know my place. Open my eyes to know where my invitation is. So that what is in me, what you bestowed on me, will be revealed. Father, help me. Father, help me. Lift up your voice and pray. The right location will produce healing. The right location will produce direction. The light, right location will, bring, will release the benefits of God that you have been waiting for. Lift up your voice, begin to pray.
Father, help me to know my rightful place. Help me to know my Father, open my eyes so that I may see. For what you bestowed upon me, God, open them now. Father, show us our rightful place, oh God. Show us where our invitation is, oh God. Open our eyes right now, oh God. To know the place you want us to be, oh God. Liti the Roma Zatan Kanda Bazete Lipandu Remanda Bagite Le Show us the location of God Zitu Rabanda Bakanda Lipanuste Riva Cosmi the location God Zipanova Ante Le Nipra Duza Leku Revanda Baziti Mande Le Pokori de Menantos the Ibra Tavanasto Iba Ribanaso Lipa Kurabana Dovinde de Basote Bakin de Lekuremanda Badebas. Lift up your voice, lift up your voice. Prasabuna Kuremanda Pete Makurema. Zipa Kibarusva until any presivas. As be open, eh, Karopa. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I recognize what you have put in me. I recognize what you have put in me. All the challenges I am facing. All the challenges I am facing. It is because of the gift that is upon me. It is because of the gift that is upon me. Father, help me now. Father, help me now. That I may receive my restoration. That I may receive my restoration. Help me now. Help me now. That whatever expiration that the enemy put on me. That whatever expiration that the enemy put, put on me. That it will be broken. That it will be broken. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Help us now, God. Whatever the enemy is the expiration be broken. The expiration be broken. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. Broken. Karopa. Meti kana masanda. Be broken. Let Karopa ya pasi. Let him ya paleba. Let what he wants to do. Say in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I renounce. I renounce. Every single curse. Every single curse. That I have spoken over myself. That I have spoken over myself. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I reverse it. I reverse it. And I speak blessings over myself. And I speak blessings over myself. Begin to declare blessings over you. 